in Puerto Rico, $15 million has been approved to pay the island's police force for extra hours worked. The Secretary of the Public Security Department recently held a meeting with the fiscal authority that governs the finances of the island for the approval of these funds. Our Francis Felix reports. The Financial and Oversight Management Board approved the disbursement of $15 million for the overtime payment of the agents of the police bureau. We went to the Public Security Department and talked with the Secretary, Alexis Torres, who told us about the importance of the approval of these funds and the commitment of the department with the police agents. During a meeting with the police commissioners of the different regions of the island, the secretary granted us an interview where he explained how the department obtained the approval of the $15 million disbursement during a meeting with the fiscal authority. We have uh, different meetings with not only uh, the board, but rather also um, OGP. We have two different budgets uh, to cover the overtime of the uh, police officers. We have one which is the uh, payout, which was approved by the board uh, a couple of years back. Uh, that included two years of $122 million, and the third year was $77 million. Out of those funds, $10 million has been disbursed, uh, and we are doing an audit right now to complete and to, to be able to certify that we um, uh, did the, the whole process uh, of the uh, overtime that was uh, owed to these police officers. In the other hand, we have our fiscal year budget, uh, which was uh, included $41 million for overtime to the uh, police officers. The payroll will impact 9,817 police officers, a payment that was owed to the police agents. We, we receive information from some of the uh, officers that are already, they, they have already received uh, the overtime pay. So uh, obviously we, uh, that's the uh, commitment that we have with the uh, Puerto Rico Police Bureau uh, to uh, make sure that they get paid their overtime and that's what they work for. The secretary will also request the federal to approve $27 million for the payment of overtime for civilian employees of the police bureau and another $13 million for the purchase of uniforms. Out of those $77 million of the third year of the payout, we have spoken uh, and we have uh, met with the board. Um, we expect to um, disperse close to $35 million of the, of the um, whole amount. So we are asking them to allow us to pay $27 million that we owe to the uh, civilian employees of the uh, police force. Um, and the remainder, uh, 13 or $14 million dollars, uh, to buy their, their new uniforms for, for the uh, police officers. The secretary assures us the commitment on improving the working conditions of the police and all the employees of the businesses. Well, we recognize uh, their work. Uh, that's part of their job, and, and that's part of our job, paying them uh, what they have worked. Uh, and that's why we keep uh, meetings with uh, the board to uh, make sure that they are paid. This special payroll adds to the $46 million that has already been paid to officers in overtime this fiscal year. Reporting from Atorrey, Puerto Rico, Francis Felix. All right, thanks so much, Francis. In the meantime, Jamaica has recorded a million stopover visitors for 2022, just halfway into the year. It reached the milestone with the arrival of a JetBlue flight, blue flight from New York. And the Minister of Tourism, Ed Lombartlett, said the strong arrival figure is a sign that the industry is on the cusp of restoring its 2019 levels of arrivals and earnings following the disruptions caused by the pandemic. He said Jamaica is well on its way to achieving its 2022 projections of total visitor arrivals of 3.2 million and total revenue of 3.3 million U.S. dollars. If we intended to maintain any semblance of the momentum, and you know we always do, we can safely say that well before 2024, we will have 4.5 million visitors and we will earn 4.7 billion U.S. dollars for Jamaica. And the Director of Tourism, Donovan White, said Jamaica has been seeing a steadily increasing growth in stopover arrivals this year. Meantime, the Minister Bartlett said investors from the Middle East are showing interest in the country's tourism and travel industry. 
In the case of the Emirates, which is the largest and most significant of all the carriers of the Middle East, they not only gave the undertaking, but they actually, for the first time in our history, started to sell Destination Jamaica through their Emirates holidays so that people can buy direct flight to Jamaica from the Middle East and elsewhere. And switching gears now, during the summit of the Americas, Canada's Prime Minister Justin Trudeau announced a migration declaration to welcome migrants into the country. Our One Caribbean News, Deandra Hamilton, reports. At the conclusion of the Summit of the Americas, 20 countries, including Canada and the United States, have signed off on a declaration, the Los Angeles Declaration on Migration and Protection. It's a response to the issue in the Americas. During a briefing with reporters last Friday, Prime Minister of Canada Justin Trudeau said he fully endorsed the declaration and pledged that his country will welcome 4,000 migrants from the Americas by 2028. It will also increase refugee resettlement from the Americas and welcome 4,000 additional individuals by 2028. Canada has one of the most progressive, generous, and welcoming immigration policies in the world, and we continue to welcome hundreds of thousands of people from all over the globe. We're committed to continue working with partners to address the migration crisis, and we fully endorse the Los Angeles Declaration on Migration and Protection. Under the Migration Declaration, Canada has also committed to spending around 27 million U.S. dollars this year on slowing the flow of irregular migration from the Americas. And as part of a pre-existing agreement, it will bring in an additional 50,000 agricultural workers this year from Mexico, Guatemala, and the Caribbean. Prime Minister Trudeau also said tackling the migration crisis requires more than just taking in more people. He noted that it means making smart investments among other things. But we also know that countering the migration crisis doesn't just mean taking more and more people, it also means making smart investments so people don't feel like they have no other option then to leave their homes, leave their communities, leave their countries. The talks on migration at the Summit of the Americas follow a call earlier by the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees for governments of the region to ensure that those in need of international protection are identified and offered unobstructed and fair asylum procedures. DeAndre Hamilton reporting. All right, thank you, DeAndre. In the meantime, wearing sunscreen can reduce your risk for sunburns, skin cancer, along other damage caused by our hot Caribbean sun. But for some, lotions and other moisturizers can lead to irritated skin. So our One Caribbean News, Emily Matson has more on ingredients to avoid in order to prevent some summer rashes. Time outdoors in the hot Caribbean sun means sunscreen, moisturizers, and lotions. But if you're not careful, some of those chemicals can wreak havoc on sensitive skin. One exposure to these different chemical substances can really ignite a fire that can burn for quite some time. Allergist Dr. Kara Wada at the Ohio State University Wexner Medical Center says before you buy your skincare products, look at the labels. Some of the ingredients that you'll find in uh, chemical-based sunscreens um, include oxybenzone, benzophenone 3 and 4, avabenzone. Those are kind of the chemical sunscreens that work well, but for some folks can cause an allergic type rash. Wada says when it comes to cosmetics and other personal care products, many products labeled as all natural or chemical free can still contain ingredients which may cause a skin reaction. So those are marketing terms and there's no standard definition for them. She suggests finding a free app that can scan a product and list its ingredients. And if your skin is sensitive, also avoid anything with fragrance. It can cause allergic rashes too. Doing a little patch test on the inside of your wrist or elbow um, for a couple days with just a small amount of the product can give you a little bit of a tester to see if you um, may have problems with it. And if you're having significant skin discomfort, itchiness, or redness, WADA says see your doctor. Emily Matson, One Caribbean News.